cruise through things uh, fairly quickly and efficiently today. Just going to open with a quick prayer. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for all your uh, generous blessings. Thank you for bringing us safely here. Thank you for continuing to watch us and guide us. And we pray that you will keep our minds clear and our thoughts clear. Uh, make us all fruitful and help us all to aspire for excellence and goodness in all that we do. Amen. Amen. Um, so, a little house cleaning, first of all. Um, next week, what I'm going to do is bring in some um, um, some swag. Going to bring in them. I have a stack of swag here, and it's going to be incentive. <laughs> so, the way the incentive reads is that for every person that you legitimately, now they can't just make up stuff, legitimately get to go on Google reviews, you get a swag item. Okay, if, if you've done it like Amp, I owe you, and you, and you, I guess, all you guys have something coming. You too, right? Oh, okay. Wait yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. So uh, that's what we'll do is we'll give away our uh, uh, swag next week. So um, you got some friends that know about us and that can legitimately go and do a review. Um, just give me their name and next week, you know. You like that? What's that? You like him? Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody, you get to do it. Have you gone on and done a review? Not yet. Okay, well, if you do a review, I will I will drive it to your house. <laughs> and you've done that before. You know, and I'll <laughs> drive you out a nice hoodie or something, you know. Um, so um, we're going to do that just as a uh, nice little incentive because those reviews actually really do help our profile. I mean, because if you think about it, we really... Even though the foundation was written into my business plan from the car dealership uh, a year ago to spin off and start the funding, I really wasn't planning on really kind of getting it going for a little while to let, you know, Everything. funds build up and things like that. And uh, the George Floyd uh, murder accelerated everything. So if you think about it, that's really when we got started. So that was not long ago. That was, what, four months ago? Something like that. And, you know, our Google profile right now is probably already above medium, you know, even, even that. Uh, and so it's, it'll be even higher. And that'll just help in a lot of different uh, facets. And uh, we're waiting on the uh, 501c3 to be uh, certified and approved by the IRS now. Um, my accountant thinks that uh, maybe, hopefully, by the end of the year, and then once that's done, you know, we can start writing grants and things like that, and we can just really rock. Because right now, everything's on a streamlined budget from my pocket. <laughs> but we're still moving forward, and we're not going to stop. Um, I thought that Bobby Gill was going to come with maybe uh, some of his uh, lemonade samples today, but it's understandable anybody that's not here today because of what's getting ready to go down tonight. Um, but he'll probably have some uh, next week, I hope. So Trevor, can you like nudge him? So Bobby Gill, we uh, we did incorporate his business uh, last week. It's called Rise LLC. And uh, basically what he has is uh, um, some lemonades, you know, various flavors and stuff like that. I did taste them um, and they do, they do taste good. So uh, I think he'll bring samples, right Trevor? He'll bring some samples out uh, next week. He is incorporated, um, so um, probably before next week's mid, uh, meeting, uh, we'll probably even have his uh, uh, website up and rocking. Um, we're doing Trevor's website Monday, right Trevor? Mm -hmm. And uh, Trevor's uh, entertainment company has got a event uh, October 23rd, and I don't know if you guys have seen that we're, you know, joined in on that. Um, uh, we support that. X, everything you guys do, uh, Bianca, you too. Every everything you guys do, we support it. Um, so, did you want to say something about that real quick, Trevor, before we transition to these other guys? Uh, as James said, I, I'm a comedian, but I have an entertainment company where I, I host and produce my own shows. And next month will be the 10 year anniversary of the first show I started producing, which is entitled The Brothers. Say. So, uh, collection of, of black comics, male comics, I also have a version I call The Sisters, 
Uh, but it's a, just a collection of uh, talents and comments around the city, and we just put on a fantastic comedy showcase for people to see. And we definitely need some laughter nowadays. <laughs> Absolutely, we do. Absolutely, we do. For many reasons, we do. Absolutely. It's healing in so many ways. So, um, so remember that? We got swag for uh, everybody that uh, uh, gets people to uh, do reviews. Just give me an account and, and so forth, and I'll have stuff uh, here for you on uh, different uh, forms and uh, so forth. Um, <clears throat> So with that said, um, we got a couple couple esteemed guests tonight. We got Keenan, and I'm I don't want to butcher his last name, Hinkleman. Hey, you did great. <laughs> and he uh, he represents Banfield Pet Hospitals, um, and, and pretty much what he wanted to do is just let us know what they got going on and so forth. And uh, we're interested in seeing uh, if we can you know collaborate and so forth. Um, you know. Coming up, but it's it's good to know that, and and um, you guys know how I feel. It's, I'm always for the win-win, for 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 there be wins uh, all the way around. Um, and then after Kenan, um, we're gonna have uh, Greg Owens, um, HR manager for Medica. So they both got good stuff for us, stuff that's good to know. Uh, so without further ado, Kenan. Okay. <laughs> history and my history with Banfield and kind of where Banfield's at and where Banfield wants to go. So I've, um, to tell you a little about myself, uh, I was, um, I'm the oldest of five kids, raised uh, in the Assemblies of God Church, my dad's a pastor, um, and so very much grew up in the church situation, and that led me to um, going to North Central University, have you guys heard of that? It's in downtown Minneapolis. Um, so I went there, graduated there, met my wife there, and uh, we've been living in the cities ever since. Uh, right now we live in Hopkins. I live about a block away from this Banfield Pet Hospital. But kind of how my journey went from school to Banfield is that when I was in school, I was learning how to be a preacher. Um, and I finished school and I said, maybe that's not what I want to do actually. <laughs> so then, um, I got a job at Caribou Coffee and worked my way up at co uh, in the coffee industry and then moved from Caribou to Starbucks and then our first son was born and um, it wasn't working. There was, there was uh, too many weird hours and it was difficult to do so I started looking for other jobs um, and that's kind of what brought me to Banfield. I started looking for like different hospice jobs because I was like if I'm not going to be a pastor or a preacher, I still would like to be able to help people. I would still like to be involved in the restoration of people's lives, of like feeling like uh, giving them peace about their own lives and about the lives of their loved ones. And so I started applying for a bunch of different hospice positions, and Banfield then reached out to me and said, Hey, have you ever considered pets? And I was like, I haven't, because I actually, I've never even had a pet. <laughs> so I've never even had a pet, uh, and now I've been with them for five years. So um, I made that transition, and part of why I said, yeah, actually this is something I want to do is because pets are a really like, important part of people's lives. It's people's family. Um, and, so, and even though it's an emotional connection that I have never really had as an individual, I can really appreciate and understand the emotional value of having a pet. Um, and so I said, yeah, I, I could definitely give that a go. I could be a part of that. So I've been a manager with the with Banfield for about five years um, at two different locations. And now I'm at one that's just like a block away from my home. So I walk to work nice. every day. Yeah, it's really nice. It's great. Um, and uh, I like it there. I really do. Um, it gives me a great opportunity to, to meet people. And I mean, getting to hold animals is pretty cool. So I, I like all of that side of things. Um, and then, you know, everything 
Uh, my world kind of got a little bit more scrambled as everyone's did um, in May when, when George Floyd died. Uh, and everything that's been going on since. I'm very new to understanding um, the privileges that I have. And so I come to you guys and, and as a part of this, uh, I come in humility because um, I'm very new to understanding kind of everything that has been going on um, under my nose the whole time. And so um, as I'm learning and evaluating, I also kind of made some realizations about the industry that I work in. So the, the industry that I work in is, uh, it's about 80% white females. Um, and Banfield is looking to pave the way to change the industry. Um, it's looking to uh, pioneer a lot of things. And one aspect that I'm really passionate about is changing the face of the veterinary industry because I think that we should reflect the communities that we serve. I think that um, when people come into Banfield, regardless of their their age, their race, their gender, their sexual preferences, anything like that, like that should not be a burden between like communicating about their pet to a veterinarian or to like any of the staff members there. So that's really important to me, uh, being in this industry. And as an individual, it's really important to me because things just have to change. So <laughs> it's time for things to change. So. Um, what I brought here, and so actually, I'll, I'll tell you too, I, um, how I got to talk to James is, uh, he's friends with, um, Dr. Young, who is a veterinarian at, uh, Banfield and Richfield, and so, um, they kind of got talking, and then I kind of got thrown into the mix, and now here I am. Um, so I wanted to give you some, just background on it, so you know why I'm here. Um, uh, I really appreciate being here. And I would like to not only have Banfield be a part of this organization, but I also like as an individual would like to become involved in the organization because I think it's really important work. Um, it truly is. Um, what I have here is just some you know, information about Banfield as a company. Uh, what we really focus on is preventive care for pets. So it's the idea that if you're it's kind of the same way that like we should approach like human medicine. Like the more things that you do to stay healthy, like the less issues you're going to have later. So we offer um, these different programs that are called optimal wellness plans, and it's almost like a um, it's not an insurance plan. I tell people it's more like a gym membership for your animal. Uh, it comes with like all the things that they would need to be healthy. So like their vaccines, it comes with. Um, like as they get older, teeth cleanings, things like that. So they're customizable. Um, you make monthly payments on them or you can pay them all at once. Uh, but so that's kind of like the, the main like force of industry behind Banfield is how do we treat animals when they're healthy and keep them healthy before they get sick. When pets are on wellness plans at Banfield, they typically tend to live about two years longer because they're being seen like every six months and they're getting all their routine stuff done. So there's some information about the wellness plans in here, and then there's some information about um, kind of the different things that Banfield has done in some communities. Um, that's this uh, impact report. And there's also a, um, like our social responsibility, kind of our involvement with that. There's a lot of info there too. But the other thing I really wanted to highlight about Banfield um, is it's a really good, place to work with really good benefits. Um, I put in a couple like packets about like some of the incentives and kind of like things that can be a part of your life at Banfield. And one of the things that's actually pretty cool is um, when someone gets hired on at Banfield, regardless of where their like training level is, they're automatically like kind of a part of a, a training program that's anywhere from four to eight weeks, kind of depending on the job. Um, they're paid for all of it. It's a like a trait, like a, how do we get you from not knowing anything about being in veteran medicine to you can help in surgery. Like, so it's like a whole like comprehensive training. And then, I mean, obviously it takes time for people to get comfortable with it because it's a pretty big deal, but um, it's pretty cool that we offer that. And then uh, for the people who work at Banfield, there's also, uh, it's called Penn Foster. It's a program that, uh, it's an online school where our veterinary technicians can go and become certified veterinary technicians. So they actually get like a pay increase 
and Banfield covers a good chunk of the schooling. So they can be working at Banfield and then making money and also be like enrolled in that school to make more money too. So it's just, it's actually, it's really cool. My hospital has, um, has two or three people in the school right now. Um, and there's not really like a limit, so people can, can join if they want to. Um, what I decided to include in here too, there's like a, a list of all the Banfields that are in the metro area, or in Minnesota, but most of them are in the metro area. And um, I put the information of the managers at that location, their phone number, their address, everything. Um, and I have also told them that I would be here because in the Minnesota market, we are trying to learn how to be more inclusive, learning how to involve people who should have been involved all along. So that's kind of kind of where we're going to. Um, the leaders that I work with directly have been pretty good at opening up conversations and starting to talk about both the you know the biases that we carry intentionally and unintentionally. Um, and how we can try to overcome them to, um, I mean, in this situation, to make a better world for, for animals, but also, you know, just a better world in general. So it's pretty cool that they're making these steps, and I'm really happy to be a part of what they're doing, and I'm really happy to be here in the same room as all you guys. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions about Banfield or any of the stuff in the packet? Um, you say, okay, you said, yeah. um, you don't have to have any like um, requirements to do this job, or do you? Yeah, do yeah. So yeah, what's really cool about um, so in the state of Minnesota, there is a um, so each state has its own like practice act, and in the state of Minnesota, it's a pretty um, free act. So there's a lot of things that a, a person who's not a veterinarian can do with an animal as long as there's a veterinarian present. So like. I have no, I mean, now I've been doing it for five years, so, like, I had no, like, understanding of, I mean, even, like, the difference in breeds of dogs, like, when I started at this job. Um, but, like, I'm able to assist the doctor with giving vaccines. I'm able to assist in surgery. I'm able to um, do a whole wide variety of things. Um, and that's just from, like, the training of being involved in it. Um, what is cool is with like that Penn Foster program is that people can take those skills and get like a license themselves as a certified vet technician and then they get like a pay increase with that too. Okay. Yeah, but so there's, um, what Banfield is looking for right now is people who want to be veterinary assistants. Um, so there's veterinary assistants and then veterinary technicians. Technicians are the same thing, they just have a license. <coughs> so they have, they're able to do a little bit more like hands-on things too. Mm -hmm. um, but so we're looking for people who wanna be veterinary assistants. And then also we're looking for uh, what we call client service coordinators. Uh, basically what they do is contact all the people who have these plans and say, hey, let these do for something, you know, in the next two months, you wanna get on the books, that kind of thing. Um, so they're like receptionists, but they do even more than that too. But mm -hmm. Um, we're looking for any, anyone who'd be interested in doing those jobs because as a market we're, we're growing and we're adding more doctors and we're growing our team so it seems like a really good time to be growing them in a purposeful way as opposed to just growing them. <laughs> Man that jalapeno popper really got me sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm like, I didn't. Think. I and I'm just like breathing it back into my face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyone else have any questions for Ken? I'm just going to ask how long the program takes, and I just read. Eight months. Yeah. Not that I was Googling Banfield, but I was, yeah. <laughs> I was Googling Henry Philman. Okay. And Banfield came out right away. Okay. But Henry Philman, he actually is the, the father of a former co-worker and friend of mine, okay. Leslie Philman, who's in HR, along with me. Oh, we used to okay. work together. But Henry Philman, he's retired now, okay. but uh, I want to say he was the first African-American vet in the state, but I know oh, he oh was the first to develop a mobile veterinary practice. Okay. Door to door, house sure. to house type of thing. So, That's cool. <clears throat> so I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, so cool. Henry, and I don't know how far he went with that as far as sure. getting other people involved, because you're right. You know, how do you get people involved 
in a community, and especially when you, you want to hire people who, you know, in the community that they serve kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So exactly. that means outreach, and so I'm glad you guys are doing that, because yeah. that is a market that, you know, I would have to maybe take my dog to the doctor or whatever, and I don't have a dog, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Right? Yeah. So I'm glad you guys are out doing that. Thanks, I appreciate it. Any other questions? Keenan, thank you um, okay. for sharing with us. You're awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm really glad to be here.